Hi, this is Bacon. I'm Doc. Welcome to our rewatch of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. If you're coming here from the Chaos Factory blog, you'll know that uh, about five years ago, I did an extended um, deep dive rewatch uh, of the movies then. Um, and so when we were getting ready to launch our, our new YouTube channel, we thought what better way um, to start than to go back and revisit what was by far the most popular part of the blog. The reason why I did the original rewatch and why I'm doing it once again is because um, those books, um, those token books are my favorite. Uh, I read The Hobbit for the first time when I was like eight years old, just fell in love with it, um, moved on to Lord of the Rings. Hold on, he's, he's whining, he needs his blanket. Uh, I apologize now for all the dog interruptions that are probably gonna happen. Um, but he's cute, so it makes up for it. So, like I said, I love the books. Um, and when they uh, announced that the, the movies were going to be made, I couldn't have been more excited. And making me even more excited was that Peter Jackson was going to be the director. Uh, many people I know were surprised. They didn't think that he had done enough to that point to deserve such a big movie. Um, but I was a big Frighteners fan. In fact, I, I had a uh, Frighteners poster above my bed while I was growing up. So um, I couldn't have been more excited. And when the movies came out, I was living in um, Beijing, China at the time. And the movies weren't going to play there. So I, in fact, had to take a 27-hour train all the way down to Hong Kong so I could see the movies on opening night. Well, I'm back. Here's another dog. Um, like I said, <laughs> we're going to have some interruptions. Um, it was um, kind of this sad experience where I was so excited and as the movie progressed, this just feeling of dread and sadness, you know, slowly kind of welled up as I didn't want to admit, but it's just this realization that the movie was not actually that good. And that experience only got worse with each of, of the next two. And yet they were hugely popular and so many people loved them. And it felt like I was the only one that was you know, on the other side saying, these are not good movies. Um, not only with fans, but critics also loved them. They were getting nominated and even winning Academy Awards. So I definitely felt like what is wrong with me? Why am I the only one that's not on board with these movies? Uh, and that lasted for many years. Uh, and so that's why I wanted to do that original rewatch was to, you know, look at them and try to be objective and say, what am I missing? What does everyone else see in these that I'm not getting? And I found that, oh, I was not the only one. Lots of hardcore Tolkien fans felt the same way about the, the movies that I did. And, and so here we are, we're updating it five years on, um, and um, I want you guys just to keep a few things in mind. One, um, when I did the original rewatch, it was with the extended versions, um, because I was thinking and hoping that, oh, maybe with the director's version, um, it will be, more true, truer to, to Peter Jackson's vision um, than the theatrical release. Um, but it turns out those were even worse. Uh, and so for this new update, I will be watching the original, much shorter theatrical version, sparing everyone, including and most importantly myself, <laughs> from what was really kind of an insane experience. Number two, I'm not judging it based on the book. I'm not saying, oh, it was this way in the book and it's different in the movie and I don't like that. That's not fair to any adapted work when you take something that's, you know, in another medium, especially a very long novel like Lord of the Rings, you have to make changes, you have to make sacrifices. Um, that's the only way it's going to work. Um, and I understand that. So, um, 
just because something's different from the book doesn't mean it's bad. Um, and, and that's very important, I think. What I'm looking at is when there are changes, why did Peter Jackson make those changes? Was it necessary to make that change? Did the change make the movie better or worse than if he'd left it the same? Um, were there other choices he could have made that would have worked better? That's really my methodology. Another important thing I want to emphasize is if, if these are your favorite movies and you don't want that to change, you should not watch this because I guarantee that if you watch all of this, all of these videos all the way through, you will never be able to look at the movies in the same way. It will definitely alter your relationship. You will never be able to overlook all the mistakes um, the way you might be doing now. Um, and if, if you don't want that relationship changed, don't watch. And I hold no grudges to anyone who likes these movies because I believe that if something is your favorite, it's your favorite and you don't have to justify it. You can like whatever you want. Um, my only point is that objectively there's lots of problems with these movies. Um, it isn't just a matter of taste. It's a matter of, of sloppy filmmaking and sloppy script writing. If you're like me and you've always felt disgruntled, unhappy, um, devastated by how the movies turned out, then this should be a very cathartic experience for you. So that's it. Um, as we go through, I'll be keeping some tallies um, so that by the end, we'll know exactly how many montages there are, exactly how many um, close-ups of uh, slow motion close-ups of a character crying um, spoil alert there's a lot um, and um, by the end hopefully we'll all feel a lot better about ourselves um, so with no further ado let the fun begin